So hello everybody, it is Friday and it is time for another DAX Friday. It's a new DAX function every single Friday. In today's DAX Fridays, we're not going to do one, but two DAX functions and the one business case. How about that? So this tip comes from the hands of the one and only SQL BI guys. So they've created a post when the filter on the slicers was made on how to sync slicers in Power BI. So how to do cascading slicers. One slicer updates the other, depending on what we're trying to update, obviously. So I'm going to show you, for those of you that do not know the business case, I'm going to show you that. For those of you that know, click on the timeline that says here and go directly to the solution. Okay. Those of you that do not know what I'm talking about, let's go back into Power BI and I'll show you. Cascading slices, what is this? Okay, so I have here, this is the Northwind dataset, nothing weird. I have uh, products, order details, orders, and customers. We've seen this a thousand times. And I have prepared a little dashboard just to state what we want. So I have here company names. I have product names and then product name, year and sales. So when I pick a co company name here, I pick the first one and I go to product name, I want this slicer to show me only the products that have sales. So if I go here to Alice, it shouldn't show because there's no sales. What's the point on it? Okay. It is a very, very common requirement. Now, there are three ways you can solve this. The first one you shouldn't use. The second one you can use if you have a small model. The third one you can use if you have a big model. Okay. All kinds of possibilities. As always in Power BI, you know how it is. Okay, let's go back to the model. And I'm going to show you the one that you should not use. And this is the one that probably you've been using until they release the possibility to add filters to slicers. Okay. So. What's going on in here? Let me show you. Um, the issue with this and the reason why this is not filtering is because, you know, the filters go in the order or in the direction of the arrow there. So this filter will go there, this filter will go here and then there. So this table cannot filter that table or that one cannot filter that one because, you know, it is locked in here. So there is no way. So how do we, how have you been solving this? It is by getting, let me, by getting this one, putting as a bi-directional relationship. If you do that, then suddenly the filters can move through all the tables and our dear Alice is not here. Alice Martin, what, is, what product is that? I'm, I'm, I'm seriously curious. I should Google it. Anyhow, not here. So now we have a list of products where there are sales only. The rest of the products are gone. You can see it. There's nothing in here. But what's the issue with that? Bi-directional relationships will get you in all kinds of trouble. I have a video on that. Link down below, go grab it, check it out in case you don't know why. Don't use this method, especially now that there are options. Okay, let's remove this thing, put it to single again, and now we're back in trouble. Alice is back and we don't want Alice in here. So how do we do it? Okay, if your model is small, what you can do is you click on product name, you grab sales, you put sales into the filter pane as a visual filter, and then you say not blank. So if it's not blank, show it. Otherwise, don't show it. Basically, don't show um, items that are blank. And then Alice should be gone. And she is. she's gone. Remember to click apply filter, okay? Otherwise, <laughs> you won't get applied. So now again, we have a list of products where, right? Awesome. Now, what's the issue with this approach? What this is basically doing is calculating the sales for each product name and then, you know, filtering out all of that on the fly. So it's doing a calculation. Depending on what your calculation is, maybe that's fine. Depending on how big your model is, maybe that is fine too. But if your model is big or your calculation is complex, this could take forever. 
So how do you do it? You make an easy calculation, right? So this is the third way to do it. If you have a big model, this is the way to go for you. Or now that you know, you can use the third way all the way, either way. You choose. That's the wonderful thing of this. So how do we do it instead? Here's the thing. Well, this is the smart thing that the guys did. They created a measure. This is here. Um, if it's not empty, if order details is not empty, that means if there are orders, then one, otherwise zero. I'll show you. We put it in here. And this measure, I'm going to show you. But for now, you have to believe me. This measure returns ones and zeros. So we say if is one, apply filter, remember that, Alice is gone. You see? So now again, we have a slicer that shows only products where there are sales. Yay. Okay. How does this mysterious thing work? Hmm. Be curious always. It just helps learning, you know? Uh, but in this case, I'm going to decrypt it for you. Okay. Now, if you go to their blog post, you'll see that they wrote, I think it was quite interesting, not is empty without, you know, if you go to the documentation, you'll see a function that is called not, you'll see a function that is called is empty, but you will not see a function that is called not is empty. But apparently that such function exists. So if I remember that, if I remove the, the bracket or the parentheses, it's still working. I couldn't find that function anywhere in here. And I searched and I, it's just, it's available, but it's not documented basically. But uh, is empty is obviously there and um, not is also there, right? Is empty? Is empty is not there either? Okay. You see. Anyhow, now you know three. Not is empty and not is empty. And let me show you. We go back. Um, how does this thing work? That's the thing. I, I was curious. Like, how, what was what's going on on this measure? Um, can I pick the measure? Yeah. Okay. Good. The is not empty part is clear, right? So this, I'm going to show you. If we just remove the int part, so the integral part, and then we just put not is empty, we're going to get a true or false. Let me remove that one. So we're going to get true or false depending if there are sales or not. So if there are not sales, you'll get false. If there are uh, sales, you'll get true. Now, if you try to put that, oh, not there, not there, not there, we get product name. So if we try, so if we put that measure in there, so we get slicers. Now the integral part is gone. So this is just, it's empty. So it returns true or false. You cannot filter logical expression there. You can only filter numbers. So that's why I had no idea this was possible. Int which is integral, turns true, false to one or zero. You see it here. And now that it turns one and zero, a whole world of possibilities, you see it came. Now we can finally go in here, is one, apply, and we are back in business. Alice is gone. Okay, so that's the way it worked. I had no idea that that was possible. If you go into the int function in DAX, it doesn't say anywhere that it will, that that's doable. It just says it runs a number into the nearest integer, but not that it can convert uh, true or false into one and zero. Who knew? Now we know. Okay, now a few more things. If you want to, um, Filter by more than one condition. You have here uh, two conditions with a logical and to have two different conditions you can put it in. 
Uh, another thing that I thought it was very interesting is the best practice in testing an empty table fed DAX is in this order. First is empty, second is blank count rows, and third count rows. Now, is empty is not available in Excel 2013, so you have to pick the other up once if you want to do this in Excel. So, both these links down below. And voila! Cascading dropdowns! Yes! Yes! Finally! So. I hope this is useful for you, and um, we're finally back with some DAX. I'll continue with DAX functions next uh, Friday, not sure where it will be, but I heard you also loud and clear that you want to see both DAX and statistic functions, so I'll do both. How about that? Okay, so this is over today. Have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you again on Monday as always. Until then, take care, and bye-bye.